Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. With so many unknowns, is the status quo the way to go at quarterback for the Niners? The Chargers have the makings of an exciting offense for next season after their latest hire. And a new head coach doesn't mean anything unless the Panthers figure out their quarterback situation. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. I'm Peter Bukowski, starting your day with the can't miss stories and biggest debates in sports. You're Locked On Sports today. Searching all major sports. Found. Let's start with the biggest story. An incredible season by the San Francisco 49ers ends ingloriously in a 31-7 loss in the NFC Championship game in a situation that was really disappointing, dispiriting, and just plain unfortunate. Brock Purdy goes down in the first half with what we now know is a torn UCL. He's going to be out six months. Brian Peacock from Locked On 49ers and, of course, Peacock and Williamson joins me now. Before we get to the injury outlook and the quarterback situation moving forward for the 49ers, how different do you think this game would have been if that injury just doesn't happen and the 49ers have a quarterback who, I don't know, can throw the ball? Uh, entirely different. Uh, the the score for sure would not have been 31 to seven. I don't know if the 49ers would have won that football game, but they were just non-competitive. They didn't have a, a, a human being that could attempt a forward pass. And, and Kyle Shanahan didn't even want to go full. I mean, obviously he's got this huge laminated call sheet with all these plays on it. And none of them were for a quarterback that wasn't Brock Purdy. And at the very least, Josh Johnson. So uh, they tried one play where Christian McCaffrey, McCaffrey threw a pass and um, it was not, as glorious as uh, the one that he threw earlier on this season, we threw a touchdown pass. And then that was it. It was like, we were, we're clamoring for wildcat halfback passes, do something. There was no forward passes to be had for the 49ers. So of course it would have changed the complexion of the entire game. How much would the game have changed and what the final score would have been more points for the 49ers than the Eagles. I have no idea about that. The Eagles clearly won up front on both sides of the ball, which is one of the reasons that Brock Purdy got hurt in the first place. So you have to give, Credit to the Eagles. We have to figure out who this 49ers team is moving forward at the quarterback position because, as I mentioned, Brock Purdy is going to be out the next six months with this UCL recovery. Trey Lance is recovering from, I believe, his second surgery. Um, and names like Tom Brady being mentioned, names like Aaron Rodgers being mentioned. So as we sit here at the end of January, understanding there is a lot that still needs to go into what's going to happen this offseason what is the next step for the 49ers just, just to make a decision in what's going to happen at QB? Well, based on the MRI and Brock Purdy still waiting on, you know, some second opinions about his torn UCL and uh, that ligament repair is going to put him out for about six months. It's not Tommy John surgery, which would be another year, uh, but it is a, a six month surgery, but that puts him back in training camp. So if all goes well with that and he doesn't lose arm strength because he's already teetering on the edge of you don't want to lose any more arms. Right. Right? He's not a, he's not a big armed quarterback to begin with. Um, if he's the same guy and his arm is as strong or stronger than it was this year and he is 100 percent healthy in six months. That's totally fine. He will have missed the offseason program, no OTAs and, and and all of that, but he'll be back for training camp and have an opportunity to compete with Trey Lance. And I think that is still the most likely thing to happen is they bring in a okay. low-level free agent, they draft a player maybe late, and they're going to have bodies in training camp. They need to add a couple of quarterbacks, but the most likely scenario is it's Trey Lance versus Brock Purdy in training camp, and Trey Lance will have the opportunity to have gone through that off-season program and might have the leg up on on Brock Purdy in that case, whereas I would have said it was flipped going into this off-season if Brock Purdy didn't get hurt and didn't have to have this UCL surgery. I think he would have gotten the first team reps uh, throughout OTAs and it would have been on uh, Trey Lance to be the guy who, by the way, is still younger than, than Brock Purdy to – to prove he's a better quarterback and go win that job from Brock Purdy. Although I think it would have been a pretty good split and a pretty legitimate quarterback competition, a big no on Aaron Rodgers because of the cost The 49ers don't have enough money to pay. They have too many superstars already on the roster to pay and don't have any draft picks this year to start trading for someone like Aaron Rodgers. But Tom Brady is a really interesting name 
because I think he could come at a price that the 49ers could handle under the salary cap, a swan song for him, a short-term deal, and really solidify the position for Kyle Shanahan so he knows he's got a veteran quarterback that he can win with, and I don't think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be that guy because even if the 49ers would want to do one more dance with Jimmy, I don't know if Jimmy wants to go through that offseason again in San Francisco with so many unknowns, and it's probably time for Jimmy to move on. Stay up to date all year on the San Francisco 49ers by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On 49ers on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Coming up, the Chargers made a slam dunk hire at offensive coordinator. But first, the NFL made a huge announcement for next season. We are really excited about our new sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. That's right, FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because they have so many great features to make betting on sports fun and easy. New customers join today and get started with $150 in free bets guaranteed after you place your first $5 bet. Just sign up at FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spreads to player props. The Lakers head to Madison Square Garden where they are underdogs to the Knicks. Wonder when the last time that happened. FanDuel likes the Knicks by two and a half. Don't miss out. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets, win or lose, at FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make every moment more with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. The NFL told its 32 teams the 2023 salary cap will be a record 224.8 million dollars this is a 16.6 million dollar increase from the 2022 cap the league also set the amounts of franchise tags on monday if you want to tag a quarterback it is going to cost you over 32.4 million dollars lamar jackson says what's up and by the way guys like joe burrow they might get double that the chicago bears are projected to have the most salary cap space with more than 91 million dollars while the new orleans saints same as always, they are projected to be over the cap by more than $58 million. Over the cap by $58 million. Oy. The Brooklyn Nets ran the LA Lakers out of the building on Monday night. Doug Norrie locked on Nets coming at you after a 121-104 win by the Brooklyn Nets over the Los Angeles Lakers in this game. No Kevin Durant. For the Nets, no Ben Simmons for the Nets, no LeBron James for the Lakers, no Anthony Davis for the Lakers. It was something like Kyrie Irving and some spare parts. That's what it felt like at times for this game. Brooklyn is able to take home the victory. They run an 11-man rotation. Players like Patty Mills and Cam Thomas, who have been effectively buried this season, come up big, end up closing the game for Brooklyn, who tried to get as many starters, except for Kyrie Irving, who played 39 minutes, some rest in this game. We're going to break down what things look like for the Nets without Durant, what the story is with Ben Simmons, how we can effectively even evaluate a team that just played a Lakers squad that's playing without their two best players. But that was the kind of night it was. The man who took over Rui Hachimura's minutes for the Washington Wizards is thriving, and he helped beat the San Antonio Spurs. What's up, everybody? It's your boy Brandon Scott again from Locked On Wizards. The Washington Wizards are partying like it's 1999 tonight because they defeat the San Antonio Spurs 127-106 for the sixth straight victory, but snapping a 22-game losing streak that it goes all the way back to 1999. But Denny Alfia led the way, 25 points, 9 rebounds, 10 for 12 from the field, 2 from 2 from 3. He led the way, and he has been shining since Rui Hachimura's trade to the Los Angeles Lakers. He has taken a bigger role off the bench, and it shows. He is driving the lane with more confidence, and he's just he's really developing, and you really see the, the potential with Denny Avia. Looking at the Wizards, how did they win this game? Well, simple, man. Team basketball, everybody eats. Tonight, they had 32 assists. Now, if you look at three-point shooting, they shot 53.3% tonight. Now, again, going back to Denny, oh, sh- this is on Denny. This win is on Denny. He, he really looked good. Tonight, driving the lane. So, again, this is a big victory for the Washington Wizards as they get a sixth straight victory. And the Dallas Mavericks hosted the Detroit Pistons in desperate need of a win. 
Luka Doncic dropped 53 points on the Detroit Pistons in a close loss for the Pistons in Dallas. Host of the Lockdown Pistons podcast, Kukil here. This was a tough game for the Pistons to lose. Killian Hayes shot 3 of 16, 2 of 10 from deep. He couldn't hit anything in the second half of tonight's game. He's probably one, the biggest reason why the Pistons lost this game. If he was able to hit any shots in the second half, a lot of them were open. The Pistons probably come away with this game and probably squeak out a victory. Jane Ivey fouls out, never was able to get into a game. If he's able to play throughout the game, you have to assume the Pistons have a better chance. Nonetheless, they had a chance to still win this game. They had done really well after the Mavericks outscored them 10-0 to start the game. But this game ended with one of the most selfish plays I've ever seen from a Pistons player in my life. Down two with 50 seconds left, Pistons could have tied this game. And one of their players made the most selfish plays I've ever seen in my entire life. I'll reveal who it was and what it was on tomorrow's episode of Lockdown Pistons Podcast. Former Cowboys offensive coordinator Kellen Moore was unemployed for about four and a half minutes. The LA Chargers scoop up the once desirable head coaching candidate, by the way, Kellen Moore, who architected the fourth best scoring offense in the league last season. He will be the guy that gets to work with Justin Herbert, Mike Williams, Austin Eckler, and what could be a very fun offense, but what has not been a very fun offense. Daniel Wade from Locked On Chargers is nodding his head as he joins me now. And Daniel, why was Kellen Moore the pick here? What is the fit like? The fit makes sense. I mean, I think when you're looking at what Kellen Moore does as opposed to Joe Lombardi, I think the biggest thing when you look at is wanting to make the Chargers more fun, like you talked about. And to me, that's more explosive. And the Chargers were one of the least explosive teams in the NFL last season. And a lot of that has to do with, you know, the route combinations and things like that. I mean, Dak Prescott had a top eight as far as average depth of target of his receivers when he's targeting him. Justin Herbert was like 42nd, and there's 32 quarterbacks yeah, in great. the NFL. So, I mean, that was something I think makes a lot of sense. But to me, one thing sticks out a lot, and it has a lot to do with the end-of-the-year press conferences from Brandon Staley and general manager Tom Telesco, and that is trying to get the Chargers running game going, trying to make it a little bit less on Justin Herbert's shoulders. I mean, that game, when you have a 27-0 to lead in a playoff game, not being able to run the football becomes very important, and that's what happened to the Chargers, at least in part of that big meltdown. So I think one thing is, hey, yes, Kellen Moore should be able to get more out of Justin Herbert and I think the bar was obviously set pretty low with Joe Lombardi not a lot of creativity not a lot of innovation and I think it makes a lot of sense for the Chargers to try to find someone who is still young like Kellen Moore not a total retread and is you know the last thing he did was two back-to-back top four offensive seasons from a scoring perspective so I think this is a, a good pick and I think that's why you saw the Chargers run not walk to make it happen. How much do you think this means changing styles? Because Joe Lombardi with Brandon Staley, they wanted to play a lot of that Kyle Shanahan kind of outside zone life. Mike McCarthy comes from the more traditional West Coast offense, though he adapted some of that later in his career. Kellen Moore, really from more of a, a collegiate background, though they don't play like those spread college sure. teams. So how do you think they're going to they're gonna push and pull on the, the schematics of this offense to fit it to what fits this group of people? And maybe how they attack an off season where they might need to add some pieces. Yeah, I think that's a great question. And I think the answer is, is it's not just going to be a hundred percent, just a total change in the offensive philosophy. I think what you're going to get is something in the middle, right? I think what you're trying to get and what they've always said they wanted to do is build the offense around Justin Herbert. So if that means taking some of the things he did well with Joe Lombardi and I'm having smart. that be part of the playbook, it's a novel concept for sure. But I think <laughs> one that they're smart to do. I mean, they always said that with Joe Lombardi, Yet it still looked like he had 39-year-old Drew Brees at times, right? Too yeah. often. It just felt like if you're building an offense around Justin Herbert, it should look a lot more fun than this because this is not a ton of fun to watch. And, you know, I know a lot of Cowboys fans are like, get ready for all the curl routes. And it's like, did you watch Joe Lombardi? Like, there's no person in the NFL who can run, you know, stick or spacing more than Joe Lombardi did. But I think the biggest thing is, is trying to come up with an offense that fits around him and also try to ease the, the transition because that is a weird thing with Kellen Moore. He doesn't really have a coaching tree. If you want to put him under the Jason Garrett coaching tree, I guess you could the one season or the two seasons he spent with him or the Mike McCarthy coaching tree. It doesn't really fit into either one of those. So I think it is going to be a hybrid. I hope it's going to be a hybrid, especially for a guy who had four offensive coordinators in college for a guy who's going into his fourth season with his third offensive coordinator. I think that has to be a big part of it is trying to integrate what he already did well without trying to totally overhaul the entire offense, even though it felt like it probably should have been a lot of points last year. 
what do they need to add to this skill group? Because they th there was a, an assumption they were going to add some speed last offseason. They didn't really do that. They don't have a true run after catch guy. That's really Austin Eckler. But yeah. that means not letting Justin Herbert sling it. So if you could just give them a guy and say, okay, they, they, if they get this kind of player in this offense, that can unlock what they want to do regardless of what scheme they're running. It has to be speed. I mean, there's the only thing that this offense truly is missing from a receiver standpoint. Well, it's two things, right? And they don't have either one of them. They don't have someone who can create after the catch, even if they don't have long speed and they don't have anyone with long speed. And that's the whole problem is when you don't have either one of those guys, because if you're tailoring your offense to run a lot of short patterns and things like that and try to create after the catch, which is what a lot of the Chargers did last year, they just didn't have the people for it, right? And do not have a guy who's good and can create in space. And also to not have a guy that can stretch the defense is what killed this Chargers offense and what limited them in a lot of ways. Stay up to date all year on the LA Chargers by subscribing to Locked On Sports today and Locked On Chargers on YouTube or wherever you get podcasts. Coming up, why a new head coach means nothing without a new plan at quarterback for the Panthers. The Panthers hired Frank Reich last week to be their head coach. It was a move that brought things full circle for the guy who took the first snap for Carolina's NFL team. The move doesn't fix everything, however, as Julian Council from Lockdown 49ers points out. Frank Reich is now the new head coach here in Carolina. So that's great, but what's the plan at quarterback? <laughs> from the beginning, for me, it did not really matter who the Panthers hired one, because it's very likely we're back here in three to five years. Cause that's just the reality of coaching hires, but also two, whoever comes here, their success is going to be dependent upon finding the right quarterback, finding and maximizing the talent of that quarterback. And that guy finally bringing stability here to Carolina at that position since Cam Newton, I guess basically what 2017, because that was the last time we had a healthy camp. So really since 2017, the Carolina Panthers have just been on the whole merry-go-round of quarterback suck. And I'm sick and damn tired of it and ready for the Panthers to finally have that quarterback that we can actually place our hopes into and not be let down. At the very least, this is familiar territory for Frank Reich, who was going year to year in Indianapolis, just trying to pull whatever veteran he could in to say, hey, let's go make a run. Phillip Rivers, hey, let's go make a run. Carson Wentz, hey, let's go make a run. Matt Ryan, hey, let's go make a run. Carolina is in a different position in their franchise, though, if they got a quality veteran like, say, a Derek Carr or a Jimmy G, they could very well be a playoff team in 2023. Is that the route they want to go? That elevates the pressure on someone like Frank Reich to win right away or do they want to be patient, try and draft and develop someone, something that Frank Reich did not get the opportunity to do in Indianapolis, but by all accounts was something that he was very good at in Philadelphia with guys like Nick Foles and Carson Wentz. They did win a Super Bowl with a backup quarterback, thanks in part to Frank Reich. And finally, Speaking of winning the Super Bowl with Frank Reich and Nick Foles, the Philadelphia Eagles open as one and a half point favorites over the Kansas City Chiefs. I am going to have a hard time picking against Patrick Mahomes and we have no idea. We have no idea if the Eagles are actually this good or if they just got to play Daniel Jones and then Brock Purdy and then Josh Johnson and then Brock Purdy who can't actually throw. We'll see. I have a hard time picking against Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid with an extra week to prepare. Thanks for making Locked On Sports today your first listen. Now go find your favorite team's Locked On podcast and make them your second listen. Coming up tomorrow, what is the next coaching domino to fall? So at least until tomorrow, stay Locked On Sports today. Locked On Podcast Network presents Locked On Sports Today. For more episodes of Locked On Sports today, go to our video on demand. Click on sports at the top of your screen. There you'll find past episodes of Locked On Sports today, plus other Locked On shows on demand.